What an amazing resource that is. Um, I've had a good look through it myself. Um, highly, highly recommend it. So please do take a look. So the final session of our conference for the year, um, we're going to take a look at, um, at Retin UK, the progress we've made against our two, um, the main pillars of, of the work that we do. So hope for tomorrow, um, the search and delivery for treatments and living for today, um, the provision of support and information. So to deliver this session, I welcome again, Tina Garvey. I haven't got a DJ like start I'd just like to thank you for that very warm welcome um, I think it, before I start it'd be really remiss of me um, not to let you know that due to the insight that this community gave us we managed to get this project discover well-being absolutely fully funded from private sources and trust and foundations which was an incredible job by our hard-working uh, fundraising team and the team that pulls together all the analysis so I just thought that was a very important point that this amazing resource has come from information that you gave us and that's why your feedback is so important so as we've spoken about today retina uk is the only organization in the uk that funds research into the search for treatments and support for the ird community exclusively and i'm privileged to give you an update on where we are now and the insight uh, that you have given us over the last four years and how that's impacted I think it's also important at this point to say that over 1,800 of, uh, members of our community have fed back to us over the four years, and that helps us shape this organisation. What we do for you and where you can access this support and guidance for you and your families. I want to take just a few short moments, and it will be, it will be relatively short, I promise you, to give you an update on what we're doing and what is available to you, and it's all based on the feedback that you have given us. What we do is we promote the search to find the causes and the treatments for inherited sight loss. And we know that from our insight survey, that over half of you, I'm throwing things around now, excuse me, I've dropped the pen. Just rejected it there. We know from our insight survey that over half of you feel our most activity is funding research and search for treatments. And that's something that we're gonna talk about. But we are a charity, as Matt quite rightly says, that's based on two main pillars of work. Hope for tomorrow, that's the search and the delivery of treatments, and also living to today. The support and information on day-to-day -day living and the progress of the amazing research that goes on all of the time. Despite the huge challenges and the setbacks that the pandemic has presented. I'd just like to take a moment and note and thank all of our scientists and research teams and our research volunteers that have carried on working in extremely difficult conditions and are still applying an amazing amount of effort to regain the momentum that we have lost. Retina UK started as a volunteer-led organisation that existed to find treatments, but what they found in addition is kinmanship, peer support and contact. As I said, we know from our insight survey that over half of you think our most important activity is funding that search for treatment. And this is something that we take extremely seriously. In fact, 56% of you said you would like the focus should be on funding and promoting the search for causes and treatments for inherited sight loss. The remainder was split more or less equally between find, providing information and support to help people manage their inherited sight loss, around 23%, and increasing society's understanding of the needs of people with inherited sight loss, around 21%. People who've had their diagnosis for more than 20 years were more likely to select a research focus compared with those diagnosed more recently, 60% compared with 45%. And that's also true of anyone aged over 55. While all groups prioritised research, there were some that put more emphasis on information and support than on increasing society's understanding of sight loss. And this tended to be with people who were diagnosed less than 20 years ago, those who were not yet sight loss registered, and those who said that they were not managing with their sight loss well. And I think that's understandable within these groups. After a lapse in activity in research generally caused by the pandemic, 
the Association of Medical Charities stated it would take at least four and a half years to recover from the pandemic. And we are committed to funding the most innovative and exciting science on the road to treatments. And we will be building a strategy to make sure we do exactly this. And there will be three main themes and work programmes that we will be focusing on to drive the very best in research. The first is the road to treatment. This will include all projects that will progress the development of therapeutic approaches, including basic science onwards from the understanding of disease mechanisms with a view to identifying a therapeutic target to projects much further along the transition, translational pathway. As we know, research becomes very, more and more expensive, which is very unfortunate, the nearer to treatment it gets. Graduating from the basic science and lab work to working models through clinical trials in people. For example, Luxterna that we've heard about today, the recently approved genetic therapy for RPE65 took approximately 25 years from proof of concept and tens upon tens of millions of pounds to bring that idea to fruition. We at Retina UK are unlikely to ever be able to afford clinical trials but we are best placed to support the whole process from lab where we can reasonably help financially to helping the clinical trial recruitment and supporting through the NICE process. And we are small but mighty in this regard. With your insight and willingness to share and support the organisation, we were able to help the NICE, pre NICE process not only approve Luxterna against the odds I may add, but in record time. Retina UK was cited no less than 16 times, and that's because we were armed with the real life impact of the condition and what treatment means to the most important people, the potential patients. Our second theme will be around genomics, to include any study of unsolved cases, variation finding, etc. And much to Kate's dismay, I call it shy genes, but I think everyone understands what I mean when I say that. And this does overlap into the road for treatment, but is incredibly important on the road to treatment. For the last seven years, Retin UK has supported the collaboration, which we helped found the UK RDC, which is a top institutions in the UK, helping to get everybody a genetic diagnosis, even those with those shy genes and those yet to be discovered. And with the help of Retin UK, there is now real collaboration and information sharing and this means that hundreds of families now have their genetic answers, allowing them a host of informed choices and a greater chance of treatment than ever before. And our third theme will be the foundations of research. This will include the development of research tools and data sets, things like natural history studies and development of disease models. Technology development, including novel methods of viewing and analyzing the retina, and innovation and enterprise in novel, novel approaches to the IRD challenges. This area is designed to help the foundations of searching for treatments, from imaging tools to uh, epidemiology and health projects. We know the importance, especially in rare conditions, the, the, sorry, the importance of information and having all the information that you need. We have previously founded the IRD Counts Consortium, which helped the community globally have all of the epidemiology and health economic information attached to the disease. So they can now influence decision makers and funders to get the very best possible results for the IRD community much, much quicker. We may not always be funding projects in all areas, but that is our target to reach. We need your support now more than ever to fund all of this vital research. We have found from our insight that Retin UK was the top source of research information for respondents, with more than two thirds, 70% of those who knew about research citing the charity as the source. Retin UK was more than twice as likely to be mentioned as the next highest source, which was the ophthalmologists at 27%. Awareness of research is nearly twice as high among those who are in contact with Retin UK. We hold regular information days, and I would urge you to have a look on our website for upcoming webinars on a whole range of subjects, as well as recordings of recent webinars on everything from optogenetics to mini retina, to medical imaging, to condition specific scientific talks. Over 500 of you have already joined us for these webinars, and these events have a 99% satisfaction rate, so I can guarantee they'll be carrying on. 
More than half, 54%, were aware of clinical research into their type of sight loss, and 20% have participated in research. And as a result of your feedback, we had that excellent session this morning specifically on clinical research. As I said, Retina UK is the top source of re uh, research information, and as in 2019, awareness of research is much higher amongst those who have engaged with Retina UK compared with those who have not. As we are the main source of information on research, science developments and clinical trials, and the wonderful team are committing to continuing this service for you, and we are looking at launching a brand new website early in the next year to improve your experience even more. And you can gain all of the information you need there. Meanwhile, all of the webinars and information are available on our current site, retinauk.org.uk, or if you'd prefer to speak to one of our friendly volunteers, the helpline is always on hand. And there are some really exciting treatment approaches on the horizon. Several genetic therapies targeting specific genes and mutations have reached clinical, uh, clinical testing and are starting to generate really encouraging results. These include gene replacement therapies that work along the similar lines to Luxterna, as well as cutting edge gene editing and RNA therapies. It's so important that our community can access genetic testing so that they are poised to make the most of any opportunities that these potential treatments present. Meanwhile, we're also starting to see so-called gene agnostic treatments, which could potentially be effective no matter what the underlying genetic fault emerge, sorry, are starting to emerge from the development pipeline. These include cell-based therapies that aim to provide nourishment and support to the retina, as well as strategies like optogenetics that enable particular types of retinal cells unaffected by disease to take over the light detection from the degenerated photoreceptors. There are small, sorry, novel small molecule drugs being employed to clear toxins from the retina and even confer, confer light sensing abilities to unaffected cells. And researchers are also exploring a potential of drugs already in use for lots of other conditions from cancer to alcoholism to see if they could be of help. Retina UK has invested more than 17 million pounds into cutting edge research since the charity was founded in 1976. We are proud to support some of the best scientists and clinicians in the field of ophthalmology and genetics, and we are always committed to driving forward high research, sorry, high quality research into causes and treatments. We are determined to build on the progress that has already been made, maintaining momentum and driving forward the best and the most promising research. We want to solve the problem of inherited retinal dystrophies, and we want to find those possible treatments. Our ability to, to do so depends entirely on the contributions that we receive from all of our fantastic supporters. And we are currently funding a range of exciting projects and programs, all of which aim to enhance our understanding of inherited sight loss and inform the development of treatments for the estimated 2 million people affected worldwide. Every year, our trustees make difficult decisions about which new projects we should fund within our limited resources. And we are determined to build on the progress that has already been made, maintaining momentum and driving forward only the best and the most promising research into inherited retinal dystrophies. This is only made possible by the donations and support that we receive by our community. Linda Laco in Newcastle, has just received some new funding from Retina UK. But thanks to earlier funding from Retina UK, Professor Laco and her team have used stem cell technology to generate retinal cells from patients with mutations in a key gene, sorry, excuse me, key gene involved in the splicing process, PRPF31, and have demonstrated that the retinal pigmented epithelial, the RPE, cells and photoreceptors are affected at the structural and the functional level. The newly funded project aims to develop a PRPF31 gene therapy to increase the levels of healthy PRPF31 and use the retinal cell model to assess the therapy's efficacy in restoring RPE and photoreceptor function. This is a highly collaborative study involving four institutions across the UK and Germany and provides a unique opportunity for rapid proof to concept. 
leading to a potential rapid translation to a phase one, two clinical trial for our, our, our PRP, F31RP patients as an immediate outcome. Between them, the faulty spliceosome genes are a relatively major cause of RP. So the outcomes of this project could be applicable to development of treatments for a much wider proportion of our community. We are also supporting a PhD studentship at Oxford University, which is co-funded by the Macula Society, that will look into potential new method for treating Stargardt disease and other conditions where a conventional gene therapy may not be possible. Under the supervision of Professor Robert McLaren, the student will investigate whether it is possible to use harmless viruses to carry special molecular tools into the retinal cells in order to edit and correct the defect defective gene code. Rather than targeting the DNA, this technique will aim to edit a different molecule called RNA that copies and then carries the genetic instruction from the centre of the cell to the protein building machinery. The original DNA is hence unaltered and safety may be improved. We are also funding a PhD student sp uh, supervised by Dr Rob Collin at the Radboud University in the Netherlands and he has studied the different genetic mutations which lead to Stargardt disease and macular dystrophy, which affects people from childhood and for which there is no cure currently. Stargardt is usually caused by the mutations on the ABCA4 gene. Patients with two severe variants of ABCA4 develop sight loss early. As their code only continues, the instructions to make harmful versions of the protein. Other people with a combination of severe and mild mutations produce a mixture of harmful and normal proteins, and so tend to avoid symptoms until much later. In some people with later onset Stargardt, bits of the genetic code are mistakenly skipped. So like a recipe with steps missing, the resulting protein doesn't turn out like it's supposed to. This project aims to understand how and why bits of the gene are skipped and to prevent the misreading of a gene that causes the damaging protein versions to be produced. The studentship has enabled and promising young scientists to lay the foundations for a future career in inherited sight loss research. Professor Maria Musagis has just submitted two final reports for very exciting projects. The first is for LCA, which is the most severe form of early onset retinal degeneration. This project has increased knowledge of, of the molecular basis of this disease and accelerates development of an effective treatment. Professor Musaji has developed new disease models, one using stem cells and one using zebrafish, so that both can be used to increase the understanding of the effects of the disease causing mutation on the RDH12 gene and test a potential new drug and gene editing treatments. This project continues to explore thanks to additional funding made direct to Moorfields Eye Charity from Retina UK. The second project explores an alternative to the traditional gene therapy. This may have implications for a wide range of inherited retinal dystrophies, not just Usher syndrome. SMAR vectors have the capacity to hold much larger genes and they have no viral components. The team are exploring whether this new approach represents a safe and effective treat future treatment option. As I said, the, um, and of course, we have our groundbreaking consortium, the UKRDC, which is helped to fund by Fight for Sight. This group has identified seven novel disease causing genes, established comprehensive understanding of the role of nine further genes and helped discover a brand new disease mechanism. Most importantly, the project has provided answers and choices for hundreds of individuals and their families and helped establish an improved diagnos diagnosis for the future. We know now that around 70% of our community will now be able to get a genetic diagnosis and within some specific conditions, that percentage is even higher. We continue to fund this project so more of our community can have the choice of a genetic diagnosis. In 2019, you told us that you wanted to hear more from us on treatment updates and managing life with sight loss. So we started to do monthly webinars and podcasts on a variety of topics. And as I've said, 99% of those who, who attended were satisfied. So there'll be many more of those to come. You also told us in 2019, it would be beneficial to have informal meetings with others affected by sight loss. 
And then, then, of course, the pandemic hit. But what we did is we moved our local peer support group meetings online during the pandemic, and we're setting up new ones all the time. So if you are interested in meeting with a local group, please do ask the staff for one close to you. As a result of our site loss survey, 43% of the people told us you weren't aware of genetic testing and it was not available for you. And we knew that you needed more information on genetic diagnosis. As we've said today and yesterday's conference, it's so important, not only for the future of research and diagnosis and treatments, but also for you as a family. To help with this, we launched our Unlock Genetics web website. It's packed with information and it's available to help you make more informed choices about your condition. The result is that more people have a genetic diagnosis and they understand that ge genetic diagnosis. It's up from 13% in 2019 to 31% now, and that's a huge jump in the right, di in the right direction. As Denise said in the previous session, only 8% of you said that you'd experienced no emotional or psychological impacts. And of course, we've heard this afternoon about our brand new Discover Wellbeing course. And that aims to enable and support our community directly to better manage the emotional impacts of living with the condition. And this is one of many services that we have, including our helpline, our talk and support services, and they're all designed to protect and nurture good well-being. This service is not built for those in crisis, but rather for that crisis to never happen. And as Do Dr. Mari Thurston said, who helped us create this absolutely fabulous service, when your head is in the right place, you can achieve anything. And this is exactly what we're aiming for. You also said to us that more than 900 of you told you how sight loss impacts on your daily lives. We share your experiences with decision makers throughout the sector the NHS and government, and we don't ever rest if there's an opportunity to get a treatment through the regulatory process. We have also fed into the NICE methodology review, hopefully aiding and smoothing the way for potential treatments to make their way through our complex systems straight to clinic, straight to you guys. We also held our professional conference yesterday where over 200 professionals helped us keep them updated with what you have told us is going well, what you need more of, and helped them support the IRD community absolutely directly. As I mentioned this morning, Retina UK is committed to serving you, the community, and driving treatments to market. Supporting all of our volunteers, researchers, and partners is entirely based and completely reliant on the feedback and direction that we get from all of you. I would like to thank everybody who took the time to take part in our survey, give us feedback, and of course, to the team that analyzes that information and delivers on those wishes. And at this point, I'd like to reassure you that this staff team never rests when it comes to delivering what you need and what you've said you want. We have seen from our last survey that there are still lots and lots of challenges that are impacting you from your point of diagnosis experiences. And finding out that Retina UK here is here to support you and your family is another thing that we will be looking at. We know we get huge satisfaction rates. Nine out of 10 of you are positively impacted from your experience with Retina UK but nearly 40% of people with the condition are not being referred to us, and we know we can resolve and improve that, that experience for you, the community. So please keep us informed on what you want us to do. Look for a local group near you, join us for a webinar, and find out more about our services, information, and the newest research coming over the horizon. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all of you for today. It's been absolutely incredible to see you face to face again. We really appreciate your time and attention, and I look forward to seeing you all again. I am glancing to the back to see, Tamak, if we've got any time for... No, no time. OK. <laughs> that was pretty clear, wasn't it? So I've got a note from Matt that I have to tell you all. He doesn't trust me with just a verbal. I have to get it written down. So as I've said, your feedback is really, really important to us. It's one of the most important things. So if you are able to fill in um, one of our feedback forms, which I believe are in the delegate bags and the team outside will have one and pass it back to a member of staff, I'd be most grateful. Please, could you also hand in your lanyards? Um, I'd love to thank the team and all of the volunteers that have helped us today. 
And if you do need some support getting back to New Street, the staff are here ready for you. We're going to just quickly change the setup front for our AGM, which should be starting in a couple of minutes. Um, but if you are leaving us now, we'd hope you could stay. But if you do need to leave us now, please have a very safe journey back. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you very much.